So today we have uh, with us Atharva, who is uh, who has been a Google Summer of Code uh, contributor in 2021 with the Tardis organization. Uh, he and I will be sort of giving a few tips to all of you on how, uh, in case you are actually interested and you are already filling in application for one of the projects uh, for Google Summer of Code. What are the, what are some of the best uh, like you know guidelines uh, that you can follow? And especially if you are at that stage where you are preparing your proposal for Google Summer of Code, what are some of the best practices? So I'll be inviting over Atharva to the stage as well. Uh, welcome, Atharva. Uh, th- uh, thank you so much for taking out time for being on this uh, stream by the Scalar uh, Tech community. And uh, we already have more than uh, 60 people right now who are watching us live at this moment. Uh, so really good, really glad to have you uh, today with us. Yep. Thank you so much, Shivai. Uh, I'm like, thank you so much for having me. Yep. Uh, so as Shivai so so mentioned, I mean. I was Google Summer Code student at Tardis uh, in 2021, and like right now, I'm an independent contractor at NumFocus, which means like NumFocus is sponsoring me to work for Tardis. So, yep. And uh, would you probably just want to share anything else that I probably missed? Uh, just a, a quick, a quick introduction about yourself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so like I started working with Tardis uh, last year, um, and I mean like since uh, so, like. So when tar- when my Google Summer of Code period ended, I since then I've been still like I've been contributing and I, like I've been working for Tardis and like so that's that's the that, that's the essence of everything. All right, that's wonderful. So uh, as we mentioned that you know today me and uh, Atharva are there to sort of give you uh, some uh, like you know insights into how to actually build a good proposal. What are some of the things that all of you can actually do in order to basically increase your chances of uh, getting selected for. Uh, Google Summer of Code 2022. So uh, before that, like you know, before we actually move to some of those tips, we just want to give a very quick introduction about uh, Google Summer of Code program itself. Uh, so Tharva, I'll be adding your uh, screen uh, right. So yeah, I mean, I guess we can go to the website. So basically, just to sort of put, put it in a nutshell, Google Summer of Code is a program that was started back in 2004 by Google as an open source program uh, where a number of different organizations they come. and they become part of this program and each organization has a number of different projects that they uh, are basically like you know taking up and uh, before this year uh, this program was mainly for uh, college university students so anyone above the age of 18 and enrolled in a college program uh, so they could basically select one of these uh, projects and then they'll have to submit a proposal for uh, for that particular project and if they get selected Uh, for a period of eight to twelve weeks, uh, they are supposed to be basically uh, like you know uh, programming under the mentorship of a mentor or a set of mentors for that particular project. So it's an open source uh, program. It's not like sort of an internship, but sort of a mentorship program where uh, you work under the guidance of a few mentors for that particular open source project. And the program is really meant for um, like introducing open source to a wider uh, set of uh, university students where. Usually, open source is not uh, taught as one of these subjects, or is not really given a lot of focus for. So there are a lot of other open source programs as well. Uh, since right now, uh, Google Summer of Code is sort of active, we wanted to take this session for everyone to uh, understand like what exactly is Google Summer of Code and how you can increase your chances of getting selected for one of these pro- projects by sort of understanding how one should actually go ahead and apply for the program. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I missed out on anything, and if you want to. Like you know, sort of uh, share anything specific uh, apart from this about Google Summer of Code. Please uh, uh, feel free to do so. Um, no, I think like you covered everything. Uh, I mean, like people do not know much about open source and like how valuable open source is. So like um, a lot of the industries there um, like are hugely dependent on open source. We use open source libraries all the time, uh, and like not much credit is given to open source because like there are people working hard, and uh, I mean like they're not paid enough sometimes, and like this is uh, this is something that like. We must give a lot of attention to, and I mean, Google is doing a really good thing by like promoting this program and like really bringing young students and young awesome developers into into the program. So it's really great. Definitely. Uh, so I guess like what we can do is that we can probably just move to the 2022 program. Uh, so every year, as we mentioned, that you know, since it's a Google Summer of Code, right? Summer. So usually it sort of takes place during the months from April till August. That's usually the timeline. Now, of course. Um, Normally, what happens is it sort of starts from like you know early January, Feb, where organizations which are interested to be a part of the Google Summer of Code program they apply 
and some of the organizations are selected uh, those are usually announced in early march and uh, this is usually the time where like you know you can actually start to apply for one like you know a few of these projects as like you know a mentee and you basically have to submit a proposal but there were a number of different uh, like you know changes that were actually made for the year of 2022 uh, in terms of the entire structure of the program so there if you want to probably go ahead and uh, share some of those yep definitely there are a lot of different changes uh, made in the program um starting like there's uh, the eligibility has been changed like the timing of the projects there are, there are like two different sizes of projects and you can you can like uh, basically the stipend is also different for these two projects and like there is also flexibility for timing of projects i mean these are these are really great changes i mean initially like so we used to say students because some of course student but it's like uh, now it's not like that it's like because some of course participant because uh not only students but like people who are um working uh, in the industries they can also apply for gsoc and i mean it's really great um so like all the details are mentioned on the google summer code blog website um and there are like two different uh, sizes of projects like there's 175 hours and like then there's 350 hours project also uh they are changed the changed like flexibility um uh, they change the timing of projects that means like if you're a, for example something happens life happens and like you you're a, you missed the deadline by for some reason so like you can still uh, still work on your project and you, and you can still complete it and there's like yeah. uh so because like due to covid and there are a lot of things happening and people sometimes even though there are really good developers but they are not able to complete um the project till the deadline so i mean these are really good changes i think yeah uh, definitely yeah. and i guess as you, as you mentioned like atharva like a lot of these changes were made uh, owing to the fact that like you know there were a lot of uh, issues that we ran into especially because of covid and uh, the program has just become more inclusive for Uh, people who are not just like you know in college but also who are from underrepresented uh, sections of the uh, tech society uh, so even they uh, now get a chance to actually be a part of these projects uh, so i guess we can probably move to the next part and that is like you know what is usually the process through which one can actually uh, apply to actually be part of google summer of code so tarva like if you would want to probably just share uh, like you know your experience of how basically the process actually works so once the organizations have been announced all the projects have been announced what uh, are the steps that one should actually take uh, to basically go ahead and like you know apply for uh, or at least try to apply for the program um yep so i mean when i started i read a lot of blogs about how i should apply and like some of the blogs said like uh, blogs said that like i should probably start applying um starting from like november but like that's not no uh, i mean that's not important you can still apply now you can still work uh, still like um still like work on your proposal now i mean i started i started like um, making my contributions in march um march last year and like i made a few, a few uh because i wanted to stand out so i so i made like a few significant prs which i thought like would help me stand out and uh, So the first thing that I did was like I scanned through I mean I walked through the website and I took a took a look at all the organizations that were there. Um, yeah and I think that uh, we can also just uh, do that right now. So yep. uh, what otherwise going to be showing you is uh, the list of all the organizations that have like you know been selected for being part of the Google Summer Code program for 2022. So we'll basically give everyone a walk through of if uh, you are uh, like you know checking out the website today for the first time you can just visit summer of code dot with google dot com slash programs slash two thousand twenty two slash organizations where you will find the list of all the organizations. Yep, and there is Tardis. So I mean, like, if you want to apply to Tardis, you can you can take a look at this, and it would it would probably mention a few skills there somewhere. So yeah, it says Python number number three, uh, Jupyter and Pandas. So I mean, like, uh, one thing is there, like, when you when you are looking at these different organizations, there are there are skills mentioned, and like. you do not have all the skills i mean even if you like so so in in a few other organizations there will be a lot of skills like maybe you're not familiar with numba maybe you're familiar with uh, numbi jupiter and pandas but maybe you're not familiar with numba so i mean you can still apply you can so the thing is like if, if you don't know a few things you should still apply and you can learn all the all of these things on the fly when you're working on your project um uh, so yeah like uh I, so what i did was like it, i like made a list of i like made a good document and i like uh saw i scanned through all the documents and uh, doc, all the organizations and i saw um which one fit me were like 
uh, am I interested in the things that they are working on and does my skill set match with, uh, match with uh, the requirements which are mentioned? Yeah. And uh, I think like a good practice, as uh, Tharwa mentioned, was that each and every organization has a certain set of, uh, like, you know, technologies that they work on. Uh, so you can, like, you know, go through each and every different organization and see what are the tech stack that they work on, right? So usually we like to sort of uh, put it in this way that there are two different ways to sort of look at it. One is that, okay, you look at all these different organizations and you are really passionate about one of the organizations. Let's say that you are really passionate about uh, TensorFlow. Right, which is a machine learning framework. So you can directly just go to the TensorFlow organization, look at all the list of uh, project ideas. So like if we scroll down, basically we uh, see for each and every different organization, a list of project ideas uh, using this click, if you click on the view ideas list. So we basically uh, can see the list of all the different ideas that that particular project uh, has like, you know, uh, shared for that particular year. So um, they also will give you some of the uh, key uh, like, you know, um, items to keep in mind that, okay, if you are interested to take part in a Google sort of code for that specific organization, each and every uh, organization will have certain set of rules that like, you know, define, uh, to basically increase your chances of getting selected. You should ideally follow those rules as well. So, um, as like, you know, Atharma mentioned that do look at the tech stack, what tech stack you are comfortable with. And even if like. Uh, your tech stack is just a part of the tech stack of the entire, uh, like, you know, list of uh, tech stacks that are mentioned for each and every organization. Do try to also like still go ahead and like, you know, take part because um, I thought of probably I'll get, give it over to you to sort of briefly talk more about what are the GitHub project ideas? Like what are the, the Google of code project ideas? Yep, definitely. Uh, for example, like last year, Last year also there were a few ideas and this year also Stardust has a lot of ideas. I mean, so like these ideas are completely different for, for like, for all these, for, for all projects. Um, but like also like uh, for Stardust, I mean, they said like, you can also put in your ideas as well. So like you could, you could like send a proposal and you can say like, this is what I want to work on. And like, even if it's not mentioned in the idea list, sometimes like for, this is what I did. I mean, like, uh, so I had two different objectives and one was mentioned in the, in the idea list and one was not. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also, also, like, I would want to probably, like, if you can go back to the organization's page, uh, one more us useful tip that I will uh, definitely recommend to everyone is the search bar. So, if you sort of uh, scroll and, like, you know, you can type any kind of, uh, this is a very powerful search. So, you can, like, you know, for example, if you are a JavaScript developer, so you can just type JavaScript over here and you'll see a list of all the organizations that are basically having JavaScript as one of the key languages that is required for their projects. So if you are like interested in uh, like, you know, machine learning, uh, JavaScript, Python, C++, specific language or specific technology, or like the organization name as well, all of those, uh, basically can be like, you know, uh, put over here in the search bar and you can search specifically for those technologies and for those particular organizations. Yep, definitely. Yeah, Atharval, so if you want to probably add something else, uh, like let's say that, okay, once I have like, you know, probably gone and I've gone through a number of different organizations and uh, I have like, you know, liked a few projects, what, what would be the next step that you would recommend to someone? Like once you have chosen, okay, like this is the project that you would want to contribute to how, like, you know, you can go ahead and like, you know, uh, what's the next step for someone? Um, yeah, so I would suggest like taking a look at their IRC channels. So like they mentioned, uh, so for example, like for TARDIS, you have Twitter channels and you can, so I would suggest like taking a look at this and like probably introducing yourself that I'm interested in this project as like a lot of people right now are doing here. Um, and you should like maybe, so you should uh, like um, maybe look at their code base and try to understand like what things that they're, that they're working on. You can also try solving their good first issues. So that makes a really good impression when they, when you're like, so they could be like broken pipelines. They could be, they could be issues that like are really easy to fix, but they haven't fixed it. So you should, you should start with that. And you could also like just jump in and like, uh, like there's probably, there would be sometimes be an initial task as there is with TARDIS. Um, and you can solve that and you, sh you could also go ahead with your project and you can, you can think like, maybe this is how I want to approach my project. And you can like ask your mentor, oh, uh, like, or like whatever people are mentoring your project and you can ask them like, is this what I should do or else 
what I should do if if not that. and i i think like it's really important because as you can see like with each and every different project that we go to uh, there is basically like you know a chat uh, usually that chat will be on gitter slack discord or even uh, like google groups for that matter and they will also have a mailing list so uh, as like you know there were mentioned that it's a good practice that you uh, like you know sort of share your uh, interest and of course in case you run into any issues or you have any questions it's always a uh, good to ask a uh, questions uh, in most of the organizations you will find people are very helpful generally people are quite helpful uh, like you know when it actually comes uh, to open source uh, you will find people really helpful for those who are just starting out with their initial contributions so even if you are like you know absolutely new or uh, to that particular organization or to open source you can still actually reach out to that organization and someone from the organization like you know someone from the community will actually be more than help like you know more than uh, uh, happy to actually help you out and generally uh, as like you know we also described uh, so other if you can go to the tardis tardis organization on uh, google summer of code website um, you'll find uh, over here like if you scroll down you'll find basically apart from the ideas list what are the contributing contributing guidelines so usually these contributing guidelines will also have like a dedicated section at times uh, just for beginners right that what are some of the beginner uh, specific things that you should actually do uh, like you know to basically get involved uh, there will be a certain a certain set of prerequisite tasks for example let's say like you know you have to introduce yourself you have to make the first ever contribution so that will give you some about amount of idea that what is the next thing that you're supposed to do in case you have any questions right so you can take up these uh, questions and usually it's recommended that you uh, like you know ask your question in public so that if there are uh, like you know other people as well who might actually have the same type of question those can be answered and it's relatively simple like you know to go through some of the commonly asked questions frequently asked questions that there might be but uh, yep. atharva like could you also like describe your journey like how uh, so yep. basically as you mentioned like you uh, wanted to contribute to tardis so when did you actually start and what would you recommend as the ideal time that one should actually approach and join like you know these community channels um i mean like i started my contributions in february and march i think um there was like one of my co uh, one of my co gi soccerers to like the uh, one of my friends also which who also contributed to tortoise called ruth he uh started talking to i mean he started contributing in january so like i mean it's, it does not depend really when you when you start talking and when you like when you start doing your contributions so it doesn't really yeah. matter i mean all that matters is you make you make significant con- uh, like contributions and uh, like you should ask questions as much as you can and uh, also like you can so if uh, if you get a chance and if if you are like maybe you, you understood the code base and maybe like you can solve other problems like people might have installation problems people might have uh, uh, so you should be active in the community you should say like okay uh, this person x person is not able to do this and i'll help him uh, can you uh, your show show your uh, like screenshot of your error and i'll try to fix your problem so that way you can also like interact with, uh, with the community and you can also gain attention of your like of our or, of our guardians and like your mentors definitely and i think that sort of brings us to like you know the next point and probably the most important point since right now uh, like you know there's an active uh, application phase where uh, like you know you are supposed to basically draft a proposal and then submit it for the projects that you are interested in so uh, we can probably just discuss a bit more towards what exactly is a proposal what are some of the things to keep in mind while uh, creating a proposal what are some of the good practices that one should keep in mind atharo i would love to for you to take over and then of course i can share my experience from being a mentor and having uh, like you know sort of gone through uh, 20 30 different proposals over the last couple of years uh, being a gulsum code mentor what are some of the things that like you know uh, Ment- a mentor or a org admin actually sees that what what makes a good proposal right so what we love to like you know start off with what exactly is a proposal like you know how should actually one make it what are some of the best practices and if you can share some insights from the proposal that you created right um, so yeah over to you um so yeah i mean like i started uh, so proposal is essentially like something that you say that this is uh, this is what i want to work on i mean and like uh, for tortoise it was really good i mean there also uh, there like somewhere on the website there already mentioned like uh, these were really good proposals and like these were accepted proposals which are like um 
which students like sent out years before 2021. And I like, I really took inspiration from those proposals. Also like uh, on GitHub, you can already, so like uh, Indian students in 2021, like they created an organization uh, and an official GSOC organization. And there are proposals that, that you can find on GitHub and you can like see all of the proposals that like students have, students have sent out and it's like open source, so you can check it out. Um, my proposal was pretty simple. I mean, so this is my proposal. You can also find this on, uh, on, on GitHub and uh, so yeah, I mean, like, so initially my proposal was this, but like uh, my project was project, the title of my project was this, but then it changed to visualizing tools for tortoise because like I was much more inter inter interested in visualization and the logging stuff was given to one, uh, given to one of my friends. So who also like worked with me in Google Summer of Code. Um, and like, it's always great because uh, there's very little time and like, you should always like, when you, when you're like, when you create the proposal, you should always ask for review. Um, that's what I did, and I and I admit a few mistakes. For example, like my why TARDIS and why me was uh, like at the bottom up, and uh, they asked me to like put it in the front because like then they can really find out who I am um, at the beginning. And also, um, I mean, like one thing which I thought uh, which was interesting, I is that like I did not, I was not limited to the idealist. I mean, they say that uh, you should do like maybe maybe like they. So for example, if you check out the idealist for TARDIS, um, there are things that they want you to work on, but maybe maybe there's something like, which you think is a good thing. And you can ask them like, I want to work on this, although it's not listed in the idealist, is this something uh, something that I can work on? And maybe it's something like, they did not think that a Google Summer Code student would be able to do. Like maybe it's a big project or something like that. So you should talk as much as you can. Um, so where is it? So yeah, I mean, and like for introducing myself in Gitter, I had made a small, um, I had made a made a small PR as well. So I mean, it's always uh, good. So like when you when you start making contributions, you can list them. So like you can say that these are contributions that I had made, um, and you can like sh show them, and so that would uh, make you get ahead of the curve. That you that would get you ahead of the curve. So yeah, I mean, this was the one. This was like one of the biggest PRs that I made uh, when I. When I was starting, I mean, this was for fixing logging. Uh, so yeah, and I also like fixed a few like different uh, small issues and like good first issues. So you can always go to issues page, and then there will be this label, and you can see good first issue label. And then the and there then there are all these labels which are which are all these issues which are labeled good first issues, and you can like start with this, maybe maybe you can solve this problem. So like already people are trying to solve this problem. So you can, you can do this. And that's, that would also make a good impression or you can just like jump in and you can start like, uh, you can just jump in and like say, uh, that maybe like if there would be a first objective of your project. Um, let's draw this. So there would be a first, so there would be a first objective and they would want you to like, Okay, so if you want to fix our testing module, then maybe you should like start with running the test. And when you're run, done running the test, then you should start like doing uh, like you should you should like do something else. And maybe you should ask uh, about like what else thing, what, what other things I should work on. For example, you can fix issues which fix issues which are labeled as testing. So there are like few. So these are issues that I made um, which are labeled testing, and you can start by solving these. So these are like these are e easy fixes, and you can start with this. So like this would also give you like a, um, a good, give you a good impression in front of your mentors. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and so this was my proposal. Um, so I'd already like included like project objectives and like, uh, uh, Shivai, is there something like you, that you want to like, uh, which I missed? You know, so actually like, you know, as I mentioned that it's really important for you to get started with like, you know, also sharing your uh, proposal for review before you actually just go ahead and submit the final version so that uh, you can get insights into what might be some of the things that you actually might be missing. Right. And uh, like, can you, uh, Atharva, can you just sort of uh, basically go ahead and uh, like, you know, sort of share what are the most important uh, things that should be there inside the proposal? Can you just mention that briefly? Uh, yep. I mean, your proposal should be really specific. I mean, like it should, 
tell uh, it should be like really easy to navigate um like i i had made like these contents and stuff but that does not really matter i matter i mean what matters is like your content and i had also included a lot of notebooks because i can find them there are notebooks so i had so i like included a lot of screenshots and stuff um and like there was this thing this was my like this was not mentioned in the idea list this is this is something that i found from the tortoise project board so you can also do something like that um and then like there's the project timeline so i mean this is very valuable so this this shows like how dedicated you are this shows like uh how you would plan out your things so this is also very helpful for like your mentors and org admins to see and probably what i can also say is that like you know uh, as atharva mentioned that each and every part of the proposal is really important so starting like you know with uh, basically the first part that is uh, like you know if we talk more about specifically about uh, like what is actually the content of the proposal because see ultimately what the proposal shows is that who server is submitting a proposal how well do they understand the project that they are going to be contributing to so if they uh if you just like read the proposal and you just like you know this put up any random things uh then like you know the mentors will be able to understand that this particular uh, contributor does not have a lot of context around the project that you know they are supposed to be contributing to so a lot of effort and focus should be put into like how can you sort of break down uh that okay whatever is like let's say that you are supposed to do these x y and z things how can you sort of define these x y and z things through the help of your proposal by giving an introduction about it uh, defining okay like what exactly you're supposed to do if you can sort of showcase some kind of plots some kind of diagrams some sample code that will actually showcase that yes you are on the right path of actually like you know uh, understanding that yes this is how this particular project will actually be solved right or this particular issue will be solved and you will gain more and more understanding of that when you are uh, taking like you know uh, basically uh, like you are getting reviewed getting your proposal reviewed and you have actually given significant amount of time to that particular project you are not just coming on the last day and you see okay like this is a project in javascript i will just go ahead and make a proposal right your proposal is uh, like you know given a lot of time uh, it is uh, very thoroughly uh, like you know given a review and then of course as atharva mentioned that the timeline is something that is really important and Uh, another way to sort of understand that whether someone has good understanding of the project is by looking at their timeline because if uh, someone who does not have a lot of experience with the project uh, they will just put some random uh, things right random values in the timeline like you know and if you are well aware of the proposal then uh, like you know uh, you will know exactly uh, okay this particular feature will let's say build will take 2 weeks to build so your uh, your timeline will actually be a lot more uh, clear and like you know it, you will be able to actually make out as like that project owner as that org admin or that mentor that uh, like you know whether a, a contributor has enough understanding about the project by looking at their uh, timeline so that is also really important and of course uh, as atharva mentioned that do make sure that you do share about your other open source experiences as well if you have already contributed to that particular project mention the prs mention what are the features that you built in case you didn't actually contribute to that specific project but let's say to some other open source project you can still share because that gives a better understanding to the mentors that yes you are at least well versed with like you know actually being able to contribute to open source you know how to contribute to open source right that because ultimately they are not interviewing you before the only thing that they have in front of them is your proposal so your proposal has to be very crystal clear uh, it has to have well defined timeline well defined objectives uh, right it has to have uh, like you know uh, your previous experiences your previous contributions that you have made in open source and even if you have not made any open source contributions just share about yourself right what do you like to do or what are some of the projects that you might have built because a lot of time the first year students from college they like you know take part and they have not really done any internship uh, even if you have done like some basic projects small scale projects you can still share them right there is particular section uh, so i mean atharva if you want to probably add something else to this yeah i mean like building on what like shivai said uh, so this was really important i mean like prototyping what you are doing is really important so i mean i also asked on uh, gitter for like to my tortoise mentors like is this like what we want to build and i had like made 
and i already made a few prototypes so like one of the things that i was supposed to work on was convergence plots and i already like uh, made a few prototypes made a few prototypes and i asked them like um is this something that uh, like is good and like do you want me to work on in this direction or not so yeah so i had already like made a few uh, made a few prototypes and like i had uh, so i had also included gif um and notebook files so so that like they could check out the code and how it was written and like stuff like and stuff like that. So this is GIF, um, and this is code for one of these one of the projects. So you could so you could do something like that, and this that I think uh, really gives a good good impression. Um, this is what I did. Uh, so yeah. This this is this. So this was one of the GIFs that I included in my proposal. Yep. Um, yeah, sure. That's that's how, that's it. I think. Uh, basically, uh, apart from that, like what I can also sort of share is like, you know, at least from a mentor's perspective, as like, you know, uh, we mentioned that uh, the most important thing, like, you know, uh, like someone uh, as a mentor, what we are looking at is that uh, this program is not just an internship, right? It's a community building as uh, initiative as well, that we want contributors to basically take part in these programs, but then do not just take part as a contributor limited to being part of Google Sort of Code, but also like, you know, in the longer term, they become part of the organization. They contribute even further outside of the Google Sort of Code program. And they also uh, like, you know, advocate and invite other members who can actually contribute to these open source programs. So um, like, you know, as Atharva mentioned, one of the really great points was that um, you should basically be helpful in the organization. Uh, you shouldn't just have that mindset that you are here just to take part in Google source code and be done with it. Right. Uh, a lot of times we see that really, really good programmers. Right. And of course, this is not like true for all organizations, but at least the organizations that I have been part of, including Jenkins, TensorFlow, um, the case has been that what is valued more is that how many, like, you know, how much active is a particular contributor and whether they are actually having a good mindset. What, what I mean by good mindset is that mindset that they will actually stay longer and they are really helpful in the community. So even if you are not probably the best programmer, you do not know everything, uh, you know, the basics and you can get uh, things done. Um, you probably might be given an edge or you might be selected over someone who might be a really good programmer, but then their only focus is just to get Google sort of code. They do not want to do anything after that. Right. So if you are a regular contributor, if you are contributing on a regular basis, and you have like, you know, made yourself like made a mark for yourself in terms of staying active and showing your passion towards that organization. Even if your uh, proposal might not be the strongest, even if you might not have the best technical skills, you still have a higher chance of actually getting selected for that particular project. So it's not just your proposal that they're like, you know, that the mentors are looking at, looking at, they're also looking at you as a person, right? And of course it's not like it's true for all organizations. Some organizations might just look at your proposal. But generally speaking, like, you know, so that is why it's, it's, of course, it's not absolutely necessary to start like, you know, a year before, but if you do join that organization early, at least you get to know about the people who work there, right. Who are basically contributors over there. You get to know much more about uh, like, you know, in depth about the projects that are being built. You get time enough time to basically, let's say, learn a few new skills. If you are wishing to contribute to a project that is, uh, let's say out of your scope of your current, uh, tech stack that you have, right. So you get enough time to get yourself, uh, accustomed, like, you know, to that particular organization. So, um, that's something that like, you know, as mentors, uh, we are sort of looking at inside of the proposal and in the mentees, like, you know, who are basically submitting applications for, or submitting proposals for these projects. Uh, so yeah, like I thought if you want to probably add something else uh, to this part. Yeah. I mean, like what you said, Shiva is very, very, I mean, important. I mean, like it does not matter. So for example, like you, your project uh, could have been like, for example, if you're, you're like, maybe you're a really good programmer and you like finish two months project in one month and what you do for the rest of the month. So like, they also want to select, uh, also want to know who you are, who you are as a person. So like, if you're done with the project, then they want you to work on some other things like which are important for them. So yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I think Shiva. All right. Uh, so I guess, uh, apart from that, what we can also do is that, uh, we can probably start taking up some of the questions. 
um because a lot of people had a number of questions and actually a lot of people were asking if you can share your proposal uh, like you know so if uh, if you have a public link if you can share the url i'll share it with uh, the other folks um yeah i think this is public uh yeah you can uh, you, what you can do is you can share it in the uh, streamyard private chat and i will share it with everyone but we'll start taking up a lot of because we have a lot of questions that people have asked so the first question that we have is uh, by prabal who asks um, without any prior contribution in open source what are the chances to get selected oh no i don't think like it really matters if you're like if you haven't made any of previous contributions like it happened with tordis as well so all you matter is like sometimes your proposal matters and like i mean there's still time to for you to contribute you can always solve good first issues and you can always solve a few issues that are really easy like i don't think it matters like uh, you have to have made a lot of significant contributions like you need to it's all right i mean there are no this like it's all right if you haven't made any prior con uh, contributions and like totally new and if you are totally new it's all right um there's still chances you should just you should like keep interacting keep talking to your mentors like keep like involving yourself yourself as much as uh, as much as you can and like i think you, you will get through yeah and i think that uh, like with respect to open source uh, there are a few other requis prerequisites that like you know you should have and i think those are so somewhat important so you should have good knowledge about uh, git you should have like you know at least a uh, decent amount of knowledge about one programming language and that should be enough to get you started right uh, git is really important because everything that you do will be you using git even if you have a project on gitlab or you might have a project on github right on or on bitbucket uh, yeah and by the way uh, atharva if you can please share your uh, uh, pro, like you know link oh, okay i think oh um, yeah i did link. like i did it in private chat yeah so let let me just quickly share this in the chat section i mean so this is like this is a collection of all the all the proposals not not yeah. all but like a lot of the proposals from last year so this would be really helpful to All right. So uh, the next question is by Sumitra, who asks, "What are the prerequisites to participate in the program?" Um, I mean the same. I mean, like, uh, so you should at least know like half of the uh, half of the skills. But if even if you do not know, it's all right. I mean, like, even if you know half of the skills, you can also always like learn on the fly. I mean, this happens all the time. I mean, you are not always perfect. I mean, still now there are things that I do not know when I'm working with artists. Still. There are a lot of things that I'm learning wh while I'm working as well. So I mean, it's all right. There are prerequisites like you should know version control, as Shivai said. Like, and you should not make like uh, like mistakes. For example, like uh, creating a pull request from the master branch, and uh, so you should be careful about that. I uh, I would suggest like taking a look at a few open source blogs and uh, to see and try to understand how like open source contributions are done. So you so you do not make these mistakes. And like for the um, so there are also like few. Things that should that you should keep in mind. For example, there, what like, what you should, what type the commit messages should be. For example, like, uh, and in what format should it be. So it should not be like always like changed. Uh, like update this file, update that file. It should be like very specific. And like there are a few different like things that you should keep in mind when like when you're like contributing. But uh, but that's I think it. And you can always fix yourself. I mean, like you make mistakes and then you learn. And yeah, I I I may also made a few mistakes, and yeah. All right. Uh, so the next question is by Manav. Where and what to start for ZSOC? Basically, for uh people participating for the first time. Um, I mean, like, so when I was starting, I read a lot of blogs, and they said like you should probably start in November, you should probably start in January, but it does not really matter. I started in March, and um, um I mean, like, my proposal was in April. So and you can always start now. I mean, like, you there's like there's no specific timing. If you start earlier, then it's great. If you start late, it's also fine. You can always contribute and you can always like, uh, you can always stand out of the um of the crowd. You can you can show how good you are. There's still time. All right. Uh, so the next question is by Narendra, who asks, is this only for students or working professional? So as we mentioned, Narendra, that uh, this year. Uh, this program is now also open for working professionals. So, if you are 
just out of college or you have uh, less experience like let's say one or two years of experience as well you can definitely also like you know uh, take part in the uh, in the uh, this program uh, so because from 2022 like you know uh, there are a lot of different options for you as well so if you are like you know as a working professional if you want to contribute you can take part in a like let's say because there are two different type of projects right uh, medium and like large projects so medium are like 175 hours projects so with each and every different project idea you'll also see whether it's a medium project or a large project and depending on your availability you can look out for those projects that are specifically medium projects right so that should give you an idea like uh, or you're able to actually you'll be able to make a selection which particular type of projects do you actually want to contribute to okay then arvind is asking how can i find an open source community um there are a lot of open source communities like i mean you can find them on gitter you can find them on mailing list as you guys said uh, like uh, almost all the time you can see this see like how you should contact like there's there's this link chat with them and like it, it would so for example for tortoise there's a link to draw, to gitter for number and for open astronomy there's the same there are there are also is channels and like uh, mailing lists and stuff that you can join and you can talk to them sometimes it's on discord as well sometimes it's on google groups and stuff like that but there you can find them i mean online and and it would be pretty, it would be pretty easy from their website you can always like go on their website and you can uh, and uh, you can see where where they can talk to them so, yeah. okay. We can move to the next question. Uh, okay, so the next question is by Sue, who asks how to create a proposal for someone who is a working professional. Mm, I'm not personally a working professional, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it would be good if you could like tell how you have contributed to open source earlier, and uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, the things that we mentioned, like uh, involving prototypes and like screenshots and um, demos of your code and like. Uh, there should be a really good timeline as well and how, how, about how you would go about doing the thing that you're supposed to do. I mean, that, that would all make a good proposal, I think. And yeah, I guess like what you can also do is like, if you're a working professional, probably you might not be getting enough time to, let's say, make some open source projects your, your, yourself. So if you can probably get uh, like, you know, permission from your company and you want to just share if you're actually using some open source tools in the work that you do and you can just briefly describe uh, which particular tools are you utilizing or if you actually build some kind of an open source tool yourself, uh, you can share about that. But yeah, I mean, uh, generally speaking, your proposal will not really be that different from a student, right? Uh, ultimately, the hero of your uh, entire uh, proposal has to be the content regarding like, you know, the project itself and how well you're able to explain what exactly needs to be done in that project. Uh, so Samir is asking, Okay, can you share the link? We have already done that. Uh, okay, so Soup is asking, so you already contributed to TARDIS. Why did you propose to apply to TARDIS again via GSOC? Um, so, I mean, like, I, I made my first contribution in March, and I mean, like, I am again applying to TARDIS because, like, I really enjoy working with them, and they also said, like, it would be, they would be happy to have me. So I would, I'm still applying to TARDIS. So again, like this is like, uh, I mean, so I have to apply through Google. So I would, I would have to submit my proposal, I think, right? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I get, yeah. yeah. Yep. Go, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So probably the question, I guess, also is uh, like, why did you select TARDIS as one of the organizations? If oh. You say that. Yeah. I mean, like. Uh, I was always uh, interested in space and astronomy as uh, like since I was a child. So, I mean that that match and also like uh, my uh, skills match. I mean like I was familiar with Plotly and Jupiter and Rubik's and like a lot of the things that like uh, what my project was 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 needing. So, I mean I was I was very familiar. So that's why. All right. Uh, the next question that we have is by Naman, who asks, I recently contributed for open source program called Open Force 2022, but not contributed in big issues, solved small issues. Is there my high chances of being selected? Um, are you aware of this Open Source, open force 2022? I'm, I'm not, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah, even I'm not. Uh, but again, Naman, like if you can, like, you know, in your proposal, you can always mention, like, you know, that whatever open source experience that you have. 
like again it does not matter if you have uh, if you're a like you know beginner and you have smaller contributions that doesn't really matter uh, if you have done open source contributions that is what matters more of course uh, you can like list down some of the more significant ones that you have actually contributed to and like you know put those in your proposal yep uh can we have one bit who asks i only know c and git can i apply um yeah i think that's sufficient but like if if there is something else you should know that as well i mean you sh- it's good that you know c and git but like if uh, i mean there's no fixed thing that like you should know this and you should know that i mean uh if if only c and git are required by your organization then i think it should be good um but if there's something else uh, that you should maybe you should get familiar with that maybe maybe like there's some program that they want you to learn then you should get familiar with that but uh, there's no fixed thing that you should know c and git and it would work for all it's also it's not like fixed that it would work for all, all organizations for example like um there are organizations that do not use c or it's just not use c use c so it's not fixed yeah uh then the next question is by narendra is there a specific stream or which one do uh, projects in case of new projects what list of things we cater for i'm not really sure what this project mean like what is particular question means i i think that uh, what probably narendra is are trying to ask for is uh, again i'm narendra if you could try to like you know probably change the structure of the uh, question we can probably move to the next one uh, next one is by fun world is time is flexible what are the timings to connect with mentor as a working professional it's difficult to avail- to be available at office time i think that's yeah, a very good question yeah yep i understand like for example like um i should i should think like you should probably talk about this with your mentor i mean it would be great like you, you could you could say this you could like you could say that i'm not available at this timing what can what timing can we talk I mean you can you can like ask this on their mailing list or on getter and stuff like that. I think it would be great if you if you ask them. Um but yeah, I understand it's very difficult to be available at office time. Yeah, and one uh, point that I would want to probably point out over here is that uh normally like you know a lot of times uh people are in different time zones. So your mentor actually might be in uh, the US and you might be in India. so it's basically after you uh, like you know talk to your uh, mentor we have to sort of discuss with them what is the best common time for both of you right uh, so that both of you can actually interact with each other right uh, that has to be done because it's a remote first program it has always been remote uh, a remote first program so like you know it has been the case like this for quite some time so just have to like you know speak with your mentor let them know regarding your availability they will let you know about their availability and then you can try to find out some common time that uh, suits both you and the mentor then the next question is uh, i have got some ideas which is how we can combine 3d printing technology with google technologies uh, i think that this is probably a little uh, out of scope yeah, of this topic, particular yeah. yeah then tanu is asking newbies in coding world what should be the road map to gsoc um I mean you, you could like start by le- learning a language um I think that's a good start and then you could solve good first issues and like I mean like this is what like uh, so yeah we sh- you could like you could start with good first issues you can make a few PRs and like you should learn a few learn learn languages and like skills which are like required for the project and I think that would be a good first start and like then introducing yourself and I'm talking to your mentors about your project and stuff like that Yeah I think one of the most important things is that as you discuss that like you know uh, you should have a decent amount of knowledge about uh, like you know the core core important things such as like you know what exactly is uh, like you know uh, git right uh, then what exactly are some of the programming languages that you want to like you know contribute to for a particular project what are the requirements so just getting started with those programming languages learning the tech stack that will be involved then of course joining the like you know the project itself um then you know going ahead and basically like you know uh, introducing yourself uh start by looking at some of the smaller uh, good first issues right uh, basically install and run the program itself uh, yourself and uh, so f- like you know so and so forth you will gradually then become better at contributing 
Uh, then the next question is, uh, okay, I don't see, okay, yeah, there are some questions. All right, so Narendra has asked the question again, how do we select uh, streams, let's say data, Python or something else? Second, in case of new project we want to propose, how do we go about doing that? And please elaborate the steps. Okay, now, now it's actually better. The first part of the question is how to basically select streams such as either data science or Python. And the second question is that how can we uh, propose new project ideas? Uh, how do you select streams? Let's say Python. I mean, like that's what, uh, so if you're interested in Python, you could like, you could like, you can always try out different things. For example, you could try out, let's say data science and maybe you're not interested in that. You can then move on to machine learning. You should like, you should, you see what you're in interested in like and if you're not interested you should you should switch i mean it's i mean that happened with me quite a few times i was like i was learning this and then i did not like it then i moved on i mean like that's that's how i think like you should select streams i mean do what you're interested in and that that would like that then like when you get started uh, on your project that would make it really easy because like you're dealing with things that you already know and you're interested in so um for the second question um how do you want to propose like, oh yeah. So like, if you, if you want to like, uh, make a, like a second objective, like things which are not listed in the idealist, you could like, what I did was like, I went through, I mean, TARDIS project boards and like, I saw issues which were like, uh, very, um, which were like dated earlier. So, I mean, like, so I really, I really like scan through the GitHub projects and like, and I asked them like, is this important? Like, is this something that I should work on? For example, like, I admit a few things and I asked them like, is this fun to do? And sometimes, and one time I was like bored and I just wanted to like, okay, is, would this be a good idea to work on? And I just like, and then it, then it uh, became my second objective. So, I mean, like yeah. I, 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 I scanned through the GitHub projects and I, and I asked them like, is this something that I should work on? So, yeah. yeah. I think, and also with respect to the second question and like, you know, how can you propose new project ideas? So I think that it's really important that uh, you do become uh, uh, like you know part of the uh, part of the community, right? Uh, part of the mailing list or the chat, uh, right? That these follow. And in case like you know you are uh, basically having any ideas, generally uh, you'll find normally what you can do is that you can email your pr proposal uh, idea. Each and every organization will have a different way, but usually you can uh, like you know get in touch with the project. Uh, or that particular organization uh, administrators or the mentors and share your project idea with them, discuss with them if if they feel that this will be actually viable. If they feel that yes, like, you know, you come to common conclusion that yes, after making some changes to the project idea, it, it is actually a good project idea, then you can submit that project idea. And then normally what happens is that internally, uh, like in the organization stay, when they are sort of looking at each and every different uh, project idea uh, and the new ideas, they will sort of uh, like, you know, try to see uh, how does that project idea actually fit into the growth and into the roadmap for the uh, project that you know, like is being contributed to? So they will take that into consideration, and if it actually fits well with the roadmap and it's actually a good uh, idea, then it like you know there's a good chance that uh, that project idea might actually get selected. And again, like you know uh, the part is that you need to be actually a good you need to have a good understanding of the project to be able to actually make a project idea that actually makes sense right you need to be well aware of the project and having contributed to the project before in order to make a, like you know a, let's say a proposal or let's say pro, uh, propose a new idea and otherwise like if you have also come across certain such things if you want to probably share yep definitely uh so i, I was thinking like it would be a good idea to also share tardis project board and so for example like here you can see that there are projects which tardis uh, like people at TARDIS have made. So for example, like so this is visualizations for TARDIS. So if like you're interested in visualization, like you can, you can take a look at this and uh, maybe you can like uh, see like, so this is like multicolor visualization to show packet propagation, TARDIS simulation, this stuff. So you can like, you can, you can make an, uh, make an objective on this, like maybe because this may be not listed in, this may not be listed in the idealist. list. So you could say like, oh, I could like, I could uh, get this done within one month. I could like, uh, what is said in the idealist, I can do it this one in one month. And when the time is, um, and if I have time, then I could like work on this as well. So this is what I want to work on. That would be a good thing. This is what I did. So Yeah. yeah. Then Sejal is asking that, where do you wish to go from here in the coming future? Um, yeah, like, 
for me, I think like I would still be applying again to GSOC and like I had a lot of fun working with artists. So I would still be working with artists for quite some time now. All right. Uh, and then Fun World is asking how much average hours efforts it will require. Can you share your experience? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, like this depends on how much you want to work. Uh, I was free last year and I really enjoyed working with artists. So, I mean, what was expected from me was like, I think under a little under 20 hours, but I really enjoyed working. So I like, <laughs> I put a little more than that. So, I mean, this depends. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for this depends on like, you can, you can see on, on Google Summer Code website, like how much is required from you, but like, you can also do more than that. And you can like communicate like someday you, maybe you, you won't, you could not hit like the timing that you were supposed to like do, but I mean, it's all right. You can like you can talk about them that I was busy and stuff like that. Yep. And uh, we also have a question by Tanu, and uh, I think like we'll just uh, take another one or two questions at max, and then we'll close the session. But Tanu's asking, I have knowledge with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Am I eligible to start, or what other things I should do at first to get started with? So, so I guess um, like this, uh, yeah, yeah. good. Go on, go ahead, Shiva. Shiva. I'm, I mean, I'm answering all the questions. So. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess like the straightforward answer to this is that uh, even if you just knew HTML, you could still get started, right? Uh, the other uh, prerequisite that I would recommend is again, like, you know, having knowledge about Git. And generally, the way you start off is by going to the particular project, uh, going through the readme of that project, understanding what the project does, going through the documentation, uh, installing the project locally. Right, introducing yourself to uh, everyone for that particular project, and just getting started with some of the beginner-friendly issues. Right, so that's generally the process. And a lot of time, people say that, "Hey, we don't know enough about GitHub." So I would recommend uh, that you know you start small. You start with some personal projects that you can host on GitHub. Learn about the basics of like you know how issues work, how a pull request work, how branches work, how Git works. Uh, on your personal projects, you can club together with your uh, friends and like, you know, build a common group project. And that will give you confidence in actually being able to actually contribute to other open source, large open source projects. And one of the important things to keep in mind is that uh, each of these open source organizations will have a certain list of uh, coding standards, contributing guidelines that need to be met. For example, what should be the branch name? What should be the pull request name, right? What are, how should you actually define your function names? And those are really important. So contributing.md is the markdown file for contributing. That is really important to sort of look at. Readme is sort of really important to look at. And that we also can get started by contributing to these open source projects. Uh, anything that you want to probably add? Um, no, I mean, so you can, like, you, there are a lot of different resources for like, which make it really easy to learn Git for, I think like, for example, I could just skip a little. So like there's this thing. Um, and there are also a lot of different uh, different resources that you can use like, that you can use to learn Git and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I mean, it's not necessary that you should know only uh, like this is not the the like things that you should know is not fixed. It's uh, it depends on like on what project you're working on and stuff like that. All right, I do not see any other uh, questions right now. So of course, if anyone has any questions, we'll probably just take. One last question, but uh, I think that uh, we have covered quite a lot of different things. And uh, like, you know, uh, of course, at this point of time, uh, there are like barely now 11 days that are left for the program. So I'll recommend that if you are not, if you have not yet started, start with itself, because of course, not a lot of time left. Ideally, you should have given a bit more time. But uh, if you were already in the process of building a proposal, I hope that this particular, uh, like, you know, session uh, helped you understand about the like you know about the uh, way in which you like you know you can build your proposal how you can get started so i think uh, with that we'll uh, conclude today's session but thank you so much uh, atharva it is really great to actually have you and share your viewpoints with everyone uh, in case like you know okay by the way uh, we have uh, like you know uh, a question by swaroop who says uh, shivai uh, said registrations to be closed at 19th. I went to register myself and it says uh, contributor registration closed. How do I register myself now? Um, so basically 19th is the last date for submitting your proposals. Yep. I do not think like the registration should be closed. Um, yeah. You can probably just yep. check once. 
second. I think uh, what you could do is like you can we can show on the live once. Um, yep. Where is it? Like I told us here, right? I have not like I have not seen much about the new website. I was familiar with the old one, but but I do yeah, not because, think like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I do not yeah, think it should be close. Okay, so it say it does say that yeah, like the contributor uh, contributor registration has closed. Okay, all right. But yeah, basically, what we were talking about is that till nineteenth, you can submit proposals. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you can see this on the timeline. There, there is still time for the uh, um, for the deadline to close. All right. With that, I guess uh, we can conclude this session. So, in case you want to reach out, uh, uh, like uh, otherwise, like if you want to just share any, uh, like you know, social media links yep. that where people can connect with you. Of course, otherwise, also there uh, on the Discord as well. So, if you have any questions, post this event. You can post on the Learn Together channel or on the Open Source channel. We'll be there. So, you can connect with Atharva as well, uh, and like Atharva can share the link of his uh, LinkedIn or whatever. So, yeah, he has shared the link. Uh, and you can also ask any questions on the Discord. Uh, it's always available. You can ask questions uh, yep. regarding the Google Snow Code program on uh, the open source channel that we have on Discord. But yeah, with that, I guess we can like you know um, conclude today's session. So thank you so much, everyone yeah. who joined, uh, uh, and thank you, uh, Atharva, for uh, like you know taking out time on a Saturday to share your knowledge with us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It was great. Uh, it was great to answer every 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 question. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye.